And here we have our amazing striped bass. This is such an iconic species on the Hudson River. This specific fish is a whopping 41 inches at long and 37 pounds. Um, she was a pregnant female caught by a local fisherman, Wayne Poker, um, and it just goes to show that these striped bass have such an important recreational uh, presence as well as a historic commercial fishing presence in the Hudson. Striped bass are so important because they've really been at the heart at so many environmental management decisions. So their spawning grounds um, have been a key piece in protecting these certain um, environmental landmarks because we want to keep this fish stock nice and healthy. They have um, a really important piece in the Hudson and even outside the Hudson as a migratory fish. We are so excited at the Hudson River Field Station because we are in the process of creating an Atlantic sturgeon model that will live at the field station at the end of Piermont Pier and be used as a teaching tool for people to learn about this really special species. In the Hudson River, we have both the Atlantic sturgeon and the short-nosed sturgeon that really rely on Havistraw Bay as a critical habitat. The Hudson River population of short-nosed sturgeon spend most, if not all, of their lives in the Hudson River itself, and they actually use Havistraw Bay as an overwintering area. Unfortunately, the short-nosed sturgeon was declared as federally endangered in 1967 for a variety of reasons, a couple including overfishing and habitat, lo habitat loss. Atlantic sturgeon are a migratory species called anadromous, which means that they're born in freshwater, they migrate out to the ocean where they live the majority of their life in saltwater, and then come back to freshwater every three to five years to spawn. Now these fish can be huge. They can be up to 16 feet long, and they've actually been around since the time of the dinosaurs. A 2007 report found that of the 562 juvenile Atlantic sturgeon netted over three years in New York, more than 90% of them were found in Havistraw Bay. And unfortunately, like the short-nosed sturgeon, the Atlantic sturgeon are also listed as federally endangered, declared in 2012. So it just shows that this Havistraw Bay region really is such a critical habitat for both our short-nosed and Atlantic sturgeon.